Hello and welcome back. We are heading towards Burrow's Rump still, but yeah, we can't really resist uh, checking out everything on the way. And uh, that definitely includes this uh, shady cavern. <clears throat> Your Majesty, a she dwarf hides in this mine. According to Gabor, her name is Stanka Moran, a renegade and thief sought by every clan. We could dispatch a few guards, but if we let her go, she's promised to show us where to find buried treasure of extraordinary value. What shall we do? <clears throat> um. Sought by every clan? Or just, uh. I, I, I need the map, okay? It's in front of some house. Right. What is that house? Is that really a. Uh... Oh, we can't really check. Based on this, it's impossible to tell. But I suppose I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Pretty windy over here. Beef, don't you wanna put on some extra layers? Perhaps? Pick that up. Neve rode on in silence, endeavoring to work out the length of her exile thus far. A scout's call tore her from her reverie. You're great! You must see this! With a grave mien, the soldier indicated a track in the snow. The hobnail bootprint was all too familiar. Neve had seen it before, upon Lyria's sandy tracks and midst the ashes to which Edern had been turned. Nilfgaardian footmen, seethed Meave. Marched through of late, interrupted Gascon. A day, perhaps two days passed. Two days passed? I'm calling bullshit on that one. Look at the weather. This, seriously, like, the snow is falling. Like, it's basically like a, a snowstorm over here. And you tell me that footprint would stay like that for two days. Or even one day. Total bullshit. I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. The scouts had learned a Nilfgaardian caravan with an armed escort had recently arrived in Mahaka. The invaders had brought with them chests brimming with gold and jewels, then exchanged these for the finest Mahakaman forged swords and spears. A scout gave me one of the coins the black clads had used for payment. Upon the coin's back, the Lyrian eagle. They pay with gold from my vault, the queen said through gritted teeth. For arms that will cut down my fighting men and subjects. We might yet pursue and hunt them down, said Reynard, a spark in his eye. And make certain Ed Dahi never lays hands on those weapons. You might, again, piped up Gabor, who had been listening to their exchange. But you might also recall, we Mahakamans are neutrals who assure all guests within our borders safety. True? Formally speaking, the Nilfgaardians have passed outside them, but attack him a stone's throw from our gates, and you'll see Bruver's rage come out his ears as steam, and out his arse as fire. <sighs> That's tough. I just ignored the arms caravan. No war's outcome has been swayed by a few wagons of arms, no matter their quality, said the queen, vaulting into her saddle. Yet if we turn Bruver against us, I dare say we shall never wrest our land from black-clad hands. The queen's men regretted her reluctance to attack, but none tried to dissuade her. They knew her too well. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know that I, I would totally attack them, but... We try to be on the good side of the dwarves. We have to keep the big picture in mind here. Which is... Uh, I don't know. Kill Nilfgaard? Well, I'm no, not killed. Well, destroy Nilfgaard, take back our empire, kill everybody. Well, I, that actually has any relation to Nilfgaard. <clears throat> Remember, lads and lassies, wash your beard with an herbal rinse before and after every shift. If you pass a snail en route to the mine, Share of the bite with him. If a hare, dove, or thrush crosses your path, stop where you are. 
and never ever whistle in the mine. Booha! Okay. Never ever. What's up with that? I mean, it can be annoying. It's just more of a silly thing. No, I'm not. Not even attempting that. Nope. One puzzle gave me PTSD, so at this point, I'm just avoiding them. Alright, that's good. The gold! Damn. Just me running around. With her hand in the air, trying to shield her eyes. Oh my god. The weather has not been kind to this tree. Meave squinted and gazed off into the distance. It seemed to her that hundreds of black patches covered the peaks on the horizon. Once she had ridden up closer, she realized these were the windows of homes carved out of solid rock. Our pride this was, sighed Gabble. Burra's Rump. A city carved out of mountain rock. Hundreds of miles of tunnels, dozens of steelworks, smithies and forges. Now, it's a vast lair to monsters. They ooze from underground, weave their nests, hatch their young, and when hunger hits them in the gut, they prowl down into the pass. Meave stood at the entrance to the underground city. The monumental gate, cast in bronze, lay on the ground, folded multiple times as a scroll of paper. Out of blackened windows oozed a stench of rotting meat and mold. The queen bent an ear to hear water dripping, and, in the distance, a metallic scraping. A sound akin to chitinous scales rubbing against rock. The soldiers await your order, your grace, said Reynard quietly, as if he feared he would wake the beasts asleep in the caverns. Do you recall my words as we fled Lyria? Said Meave, turning to Reynard. You swore you would retake your crown. Even if you had to penetrate hell to do so. Time to follow that oath. The queen inhaled deeply and stepped forward. Her sword raised and prepared to strike or parry. Moments later, it was swinging, biting, as the current tenants of Borrow's Rump came out to meet her. Now oh, let's meet the locals. Oh, optional destroy the monster nest. Done. Kind of sounds like a, the main objective here. Only one round. Ooh. Bad morale. Okay, we need these suckers. Also, Gascon can be kicked. I think we were able to get everything. Kind of want a stray bomber early. Alright, I think we might just keep this. Oh, this stench is foul. I'd like to make it known that us gnomes don't run so fast. You know, in case you're planning to skip out on the quick. I don't want to pass. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Okay. Ah, damn it! They're hatching! Place is about to swarm with creepers! Don't worry about it. My spirit's willing and how the. These damn boots are killing me. I think we gotta set the back room fire. It's random road. It's random blitz units. Regiment drummer. Only got one drummer in there. Not blitz. 
again and again and again. I should actually probably prioritize setting the back room fire. Yeah, let's do that. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Mm, I can throw these two in the back as well. Yeah. Back is burning. Damn. Okay. So. The plan seems pretty simple. We just set the back room fire and we just got a bunch of dudes. Hopefully it's gonna work out. I don't need to tweak my strat. Now is a waste of time for one like me. Okay. Do you lose? Drummer. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. Actually, I kind of fucked up here. Fine, let's play there. Life had me flowed. Now here I'm marching proud. Keep throwing stuff in the back. Ah! Destroying the monster, that seems pretty hard. Not sure if that's gonna happen. Playing the Royal Decree would have been nice. Hi. If I can recharge these guys. Oh my god. Left. Are you sure right. you have enough units? Left. Right. Beck is dying. Nice. What do we get? So much anger and not gonna happen suffering. right away. For what? I need the harp to take extra damage. We gotta play something else. Maybe a drummer. Again. again Hopefully his ball is not gonna die. Damage a random enemy. Apparently it's just random. Hi. Sure. But we can boost by 86. Seems okay. Let's see what we get. Thing about slings, they hide well. Okay, throw this in the back. We do a heal. Random. I mean, can do Savier. My pain serves a purpose. We get out some dudes, but actually, I need to pay attention that we're gonna have enough space. Maybe I don't know. So we're gonna get at these. We're gonna get at three guys at least. Again, I need to make sure that we have space. So. They just can't win. Sure. Nice one damage. Keep hitting me. I don't even need to read their units. <clears throat> Which is nice.
It's only depletes uh, depleted guys. So we will need to deplete it first. Discipline shall bring us victory. I can't fit in the guys. Oh, too many. Army's a waste of time for one like me. Way too many. Twenty two points. Okay. Yeah, but we can't play it. No space. And just keep getting some charges. Usually the opponents love killing my units more. Not a problem. This way! Follow me! <laughs> yeah. Um That was a good fight. <laughs> For me. Jesus. Though wounded, Meave approached the Shailmar, which lay writhing on the ground. She then ran her sword through its heart finishing it. Yet so spent was she that she lacked the strength to pull her blade from between the plates of the chitinous armor. The beast near took me. She whispered. It was very close. Was it very close? It was 250 something to 11 or... Oh, we got Wolvesbane. The Lyrians reached a vast hall that had once served the clans as their meeting room. The stone benches were covered in sticky slime and insectoid eggs, while bats of varying size hung from the crystal chandeliers. Gascon rummaged through old, weathered bones, surely hoping to find something of value. Gabor, in turn, was at a shut and locked door, grappling with it as if it were a deadly beast. The door finally gave way with a sigh, and the dwarf raised his arms in a triumphant gesture. It's a storeroom! Should hold Minor's tools up plenty, he said, enthused. Some barrels of alchemical brews in here, too. Lucky there's no sign of moisture. They haven't soaked through. All we've got to do is roll them out into the corridor and set a bit of fire to them. And woof! We'll have sealed the beasts off from the pass once and for all. Meave treated the dwarves' instructions as hallowed. Soon after, the mountains trembled from a powerful explosion. Rubble came down and blocked the tunnels. They say the plumes of smoke escaping the window openings in the rock could be seen as far as Aldersburg. Well, I was kind of hoping to save the place. I change the camera. Apparently not. Where am I? Okay. So the camera was just off center for some reason. No matter. Oh. <clears throat> My queen, our scouts noticed a glimmer in the eye of uh, that bus relief sculpture. We couldn't scale it, but our engineers would have to prepare the proper equipment. Though a fall from that height is sure to result in a broken neck. What is your command? We can check it out. So, we are gathering that item that I will probably never get eventually, because that's kind of how it goes. We just never find all the pieces. Okay, we sometimes find all the pieces. Draw two units and set their power to one. The problem is, I already have a lot of deck thinning, so I'm kind of tempted to not do that. Dark clouds hovered over the horizon and a strong gale snapped their banners. Damn it, a storm's coming. Gabor, take us to the nearest settlement. We must seek shelter. Soon the Lyrians arrived in Stoolcap. The town square proved full of folk. 
Several dozen dwarves laden with large sacks and satchels stood about in smaller groups. When a thick snow began to fall, the dwarves cheered. Tears streamed down the cheeks of several, but Meave could not tell if they issued from some fortuitous occurrence or if the strong wind had wrung moisture from their eyes. What is it we witness? Why do they rejoice at a snowstorm? Asked Meave, pulling her hood over her head. Well, the blizzard's good cause to postpone their expedition by another day, Gabor responded. See, they've been conscripted by drawn lots to be settlers, found homes in a village in Blackbrook Vale. Seven expeditions have gone that way already, and none survived longer than a year. Valley's cursed. No two ways about it. Mm. Intrigued, Meave proceeded to speak with the settler's leader. He confirmed Gabor's claim. He had buried many a previous colonist. All had been abnormally thin, pale, prematurely greyed, as if some wraith had drawn the lifeblood out of them. Once the dwarf had finished his tale, he gripped the queen's hand firmly, and promising a generous reward, begged that she and her Lyrians accompany the expedition to Blackbrook Valley. Taint far. Mere few leagues north along the main road. We'll make the march much easier to came with the whole army, in case of any danger. I know not how useful our swords can be against curses and spectres, said Meave. But leave you bereft and in need I will not. We shall march with you into Blackbrook Vale and see to it that you are safely arrived. Then we will march on. The dwarf sped off to announce the good tidings to his settler brethren. By the time the blizzard had abated, they were ready to march. All right. Oh, well, it won't hurt. I totally thought that these dwarves had it together more than, well, than this. Like spring cleaning and whatnot, Be but bold. no. Take on challenges, risks even. But before you set out to do anything, buy yourself some proper insurance. Ah, that's gonna help. The thing is with insurance is that people wouldn't sell it to you unless it was worth it to them. And you know what? I would be totally on board even even with that. You know, just in case insurance. But when it actually comes out to paying out the insurance, they are damn hesitant. Or it's just a scam. So we got a problem here. Stay clear of Boros Rump. Unless you like Shale Mars, that is. I love him. I just killed them. So what we have here. I can go down. Which is going to be a dead end. Not really. That is not a dead end either. I guess we want to head there here, because that's going to be a dead end, then we can come back. Right, just take out this harpy. Let's do it. Right, it's standard battle. Can I just press skip? <laughs> oh man, it's going to be easy. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. The only way I can make it harder if I intentionally make a bad deck. Okay. What about you, Harpy? Oh, nice. Harpy egg. My spirit's willing and how, but these dumb boots are killing me. Not great. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and a time to die. Ah! That fire to the back row. Human ally. Still the plan. Catch! We just have to. Whoa. Beef power. Did he just decide that, yeah, I think I have the the proper lead here. I need to play more. 
Arm is a waste of time for me. Very possible. These bots are weird. Oh, I can't exactly. Left, right, left, right. Fine. I move this out. Fine. Let's go with that. Good enough. What? Can I just pass? So we have to play another unit still. Or we don't have to, but we probably should. Next turn. Oh. Fine. Maybe a dinner. Again and again and again. Probably. Sh I don't know. I'm not sure if that's a good call. I have a blitz which plays these four. Harpy guy! Okay. Maybe. Fine. Maybe you want to play this. In the deck. Snow Wolf! So. I think I'm gonna go Lyrian Sightman. Hi. And punch him right away. Ha! Then we do Lyrian Sightman. Actually, fire into Lyrian Sightman. I smell a leak. So the Lyrian Sightman is actually defended when he gets played. It's fine. You wanna avoid that. Listen to me, old lady. The Lyrian Sightman gets ridiculously strong. Even though this is not a unit we got recently, it's still a pretty good unit. It doesn't give me any removal, but a lot of bad points. This harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Yeah, it's a little annoying. So, let's see if we get at something. Unsurprisingly. Ever have a stone, knock out one of your teeth. What we got, actually. Let's move them in the back, maybe? Deployability. So this can recharge. Regiment drummer. Also, also Hyduk recharges it. If you want to play more guys. Getting to work. Yeah, that, that's nice, but I just say we wait. Annoying. I can move all of these in the back. Then I move them out. But then we can play a high duke. Of course I'll manage. I trained a full week. Put them in the back again. The deploy. I just play a slinger. Oh, it doesn't matter. Xavier? Should I play Xavier? Play a guy. 
My gas gun is decent. Quick and painful this will be. Alright. I have 88 points. Come on. Fire is really good. The only reason I'm not using the let me some something smaller guy. Oh, we can check. Something that damages units in the fire is because units in the fire die quite a bit. Uh, yeah, let's just throw them in the back. Guess. You want a slinger? Actually, Xavier is going to die now, which is not great. We don't maximize the value. I can just do Reynado though. Slings, they hide well. I don't know. Oh my god. Gaskin is pretty big. Apply biting force to my row. I think so. I just hit the back. Thirty-six points is still decent. You can just move this in the front. Extra points for Gascon. He's a thirty-eight only. And an eighty-five point Make boost. Love, not war. <laughs> I should have played a little earlier. It doesn't matter. I only wasted 87 points. I forgot that she was order. But it doesn't matter! It's a win anyway. Oh, okay. Another easy fight. Stoyan, son of Arban. Rumor has it those plowing Barbagazi have come down from the mountains again. Take a few lads and get rid of those scrappy hairballs for good. But if they reach a fox territory, don't you dare follow them. Uber hook. Alright. Sounds good. So we are heading down. And we, we explored qu quite a lot of this area. Yeah. Almost like two thirds of it is kind of... Well, maybe not two thirds. But at least half. At least half. We managed to explore. And this is probably my favorite area so far. Yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.